Hello and welcome to my Don't Starve Together character tier list for 2022. In this video, I'll be ranking each and every Don't Starve character in terms of personality. Bang. Pulled. For a loop. You thought I'd be ranking them in terms of potency, but no. Instead, I'm ranking them in terms of the enjoyableness and creativeness of their personality, which is arbitrary and subjective and arguably defeats the purpose of a tier list, but you know what? That's not the case according to the kind of shit people make tier lists about. Like, come on, I mean, rank who you think the best Pokemon White starter is. Who's the best 40k Primark? Which Warframe has the biggest ass? Who fucking cares? I'm rambling, I'm rambling, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All joking aside, this video will basically serve as a review of my thoughts on each character across every Don't Starve game, and what makes them enjoyable to listen to. For me, obviously this video is completely and utterly non-serious, like I'm not trying to argue that character A is better than character B. After you've watched the video, consider leaving your own tier list in the comments. It'd be great to see what you guys have to think about Don't Starve's ragtag roster of glue sniffers, especially after the maybe slightly excessive amount of videos I've made criticizing Clay's work. I thought, hey, why not just make a lighthearted and fun video that doesn't really mean anything. This video is not supposed to be a serious critique on character design or anything like that. It's just a fun little divergence from a normal video in the form of a meaningless tier list. I'm going to go over each character in reverse tier order from D until S, except for a special someone who I'll be saving until last. The order is up on screen, and each tier will also be displayed on the video timeline. Let us begin. The only character who has the honor of being placed in the D tier is Wirt. I know it kind of sucks to start a video like this on a low note, but oh well. Wirt is in this tier for a number of reasons. For one, Merms was supposed to be this mysterious and unknown race, cursed by the Gnaw and I guess descended from all that. Wirt's addition seemed like it would elaborate on these scraps of information we've been fed over the years, but no. Her quotes and story have nothing to do with the Merms' supposedly deep and complex past. That, and she seems to be more concerned with saying flop over and over again, instead of something actually grabbing. And yeah, I get it, there are a lot of lines in any Don't Starve game. Not every voice sign has to be as attention grabbing as some B-list YouTuber trying to make a quick buck selling cruddy poetry, but hearing the same word over and over again frankly drives me a little bit up the wall. No, stop. Stop being cynical. This is supposed to be a happy video. No criticizing. Bad. Okay, I need to move on before I drown in my own disappointment at this character. Don't worry, I swear this is the last character I have negative things to say about. Maybe. Possibly. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate these characters in any capacity. C tier just means that they're okay. Not bad, not amazing. Wormwood is sitting just above Wirt, near to the bottom of the C tier. These two characters basically have the exact same personality, just swap Florp with friend and there you have it. The only reason the Wormwood is higher is because he isn't a walking letdown. Also, a little side note, but giving him a quirky green typeface does not make the character more interesting. I feel like this is something we all learned as 10 year olds who just discovered how to pirate fonts, but evidently some intern at Clay had this phase a little bit too late. In fairness, Wormwood is literally like three days old, so there isn't much wriggle room here, aside from designing a character who isn't three days old. It's also disappointing that Return of Them didn't bring any additional insight from Wormwood, seeing as the moon is the only thing his backstory actually contains, aside from, well that's it, really. Dumb and can barely speak is simply not an interesting enough character trait to keep my interest piked. Anyway, somewhat charming at best, repetitive and dull at worst. If the statement, um, actually, was personified, it would be Wickerbottom. Always keen to spout out some knowledge on various things that about no one asked for, Wickerbottom's quotes are all about feeding her superiority complex by regurgitating various facts and Latin names. The irony, of course, being Don't that care. if Wickerbottom was truly as smart as she thought, she probably Don't wouldn't care. have ended up as a librarian who spouts Sunday Still trivia. Wickerbottom's personality is not very interesting to me for this very reason. I don't want to know what the Latin name of corn is. I don't care what the dietary habits of a tall bird are. I will admit, sometimes Wickerbottom does rarely do something unique with her endless lists of Latin, wherein she makes up a fictional scientific name for a resident of the Don't Starve world. It can be fun to Google what those words mean in not archaic speak, and then see what arbitrary designation the creature has been given by our unqualified book sorter. That being said, if the most interesting thing a character has to say must be researched in order to be interesting, well, it's probably not actually that interesting. Because I shouldn't have to spend time looking things up on the internet just so I can enjoy them, right? Wait, that's that's like half the gameplay loop of Don't Starve. Moving on! Wheeler only has three things on the brain. Flying, thinking about her balloon, and thinking about what she could use as ammunition to terrorize the locale via shooting. Aside from that, her head appears to be full of nothing but hot air. 
similar in fact to her beloved balloon. It's a surprise she doesn't simply float away in mimicry of her second favourite conversation topic. At least then, she'd have one less thing to drone on about. It really does seem like all this character has to say is either one of those three things. I know a lot of Don't Starve characters have their favourite subject to rattle on about. It's a decent way to write a lot of lines that are in character. But Wheeler is easily the worst offender. She just doesn't stop talking about flying away, wanting to fly away, or why automatic weapons should be purchasable in the event that 30 to 50 feral peagorks harass her balloon. Which is why she's sitting here in the C tier. She definitely has some good quotes that have gotten a chuckle out of me, but that's simply not good enough for the stringent quality expectations of this virtual tier list. Ah, the country stereotype. Hilarious to everyone except people who don't live in the respective country. And even then, we're pushing it. Let's say, hypothetically, that there was an Australian character. One with an accurate stereotype. That is to say, a crippling dependency on alcohol and a gambling addiction. That wouldn't be funny, it would be real. All too real. Beyond this simple archetype, Woody doesn't really have anything interesting in his personality. No surprises when his entire character is based off of a shallow joke. Wanda sits nice, right in the centre of C tier. Why? Her personality is probably the least interesting part of her entire character. Wanda's personality is not really something that most people I've seen are actually that concerned with. Generally, Wanda plays are more concerned with getting more red gems as soon as possible, getting more suicide as soon as possible, etc. But when you do stop to examine things, well, Wanda either A. complains, or B. gives some ultimately meaningless lore dump. Now, I won't lie, Virtual characters complaining about things is funny, and Wanda definitely has some good lines in there, but it does get a bit tiring after a while. And as for the exposition dump part, well, Don't Starve already has a dedicated expositor, that of course being Wartox, who is notably higher up on this tier list than Wanda. So in conclusion, Wartox did it first. Winona, or as she should probably be better known, Charlie's sister, has much of her personality revolve around her relationship with an important character in the story. I don't hate this fact, Winona is still vaguely interesting to me, but I feel like a lot of the stuff in her quotes is only interesting because they're to do with Charlie. Aside from her sisterhood, Wanda has a number of personality traits such as hating handmade objects and loving factories. These are clearly very normal traits that the average person is likely to possess. Seriously though, Wanda's recurring personality trait in which she actively dislikes handmade objects is so... that's... That's not, that's not a thing that people think. No one says to themselves, I sure hate it when people put passion and love into a thing. I'd much prefer if this object were made in a factory alongside a slew of other mass-produced garbage. Genuinely one of the most bizarre things to ever come out of a virtual character's mouth. We're reaching the upper end of the C tier with Walani. Walani was essentially the Wilson of Shipwrecked in terms of her personality and gameplay. She's pretty neutral in regards to both. Laid back and lazy, she'd much rather be catching some waves than trying to survive. A somewhat interesting character, I have to say I like the hints towards her being an ex-pirate. Nothing super remarkable though. Sitting at the top of C tier is Walter. Despite some temptations to shove him at lower C or even in D, I've decided to grace him the top spot in C tier. I don't mind Walter's personality. He has a fairly interesting quirk, a complete lack of fear, that is a sensible trait for a child character to have. I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that he is a child, however. He's definitely far too jovial for my tastes when compared to every other Don't Starve character, notably Wendy, who despite also being a child, mostly acts like an adult. And there's also the fact that he's smiling all the time, which is not only ignorant of the game's themes, but is just plain unsettling. Oh baby, it's B tier. We're finally beginning to reach some of the good stuff. Before we talk about Don't Starve's most B tieriest of characters, consider subscribing. Here, check out this fancy motion graphic that I spent way too much time making. Click it. Click the button. Starting out at the bottom of B tier is everyone's favourite Shakespearean swine. Wilbur's quotes could possibly be the most entertaining out of the whole of Don't Starve's lineup, always finding some new hilarious combination of words and simply dripping in iconicness, playing as Wilbur is rarely boring. The only reason why she's not high is because her quotes lack a bit of substance. As funny as the mutterings of a poor sign prose speaker are, Wilbur is not exactly the most relatable character. Woodlegs is an extremely simple character. You could sum up his entire personality in less than a sentence with ease. Don't Starve has its fair share of deep and multifaceted characters, but sometimes it's nice to have an over-exaggerated simpleton like Woodlegs takes center stage. Similar to Wilbur, Woodlegs is a ton of fun to listen to, and despite the lack of depth, I mean, sometimes all you need in life is some funny pirate puns and a bottle of deep sea rum. 
Wolfgang is Don't Starve's obligatory entry into the nondescript European man stereotype. Is he French? Is he Russian? German? Who knows? The one thing we do know is that Wolfgang's questionable grasp of the English language and affinity for a particular species of nightshade makes him a rather entertaining survivor. Wolfgang just sees things as they are. He doesn't feel the need to mask his thoughts or corrupt intent, instead opting to spout whatever's on his brain. This combination of quirks lends Wolfgang a spot in the middle of B tier. Rounding out the middle of B is Weber, the indigestible. Weber's personality is certainly one of the harder ones to describe. He's naive and innocent, yet edgy and stoic, but this is not to his detriment because Weber is of course two beings in one. So although he doesn't quite have a double personality, this obvious duality in his brain makes a lot of thematic sense. Definitely some clever writing present in his character. What Wally lacks in depth, he more than makes up for with relatability and just, I don't know, he feels like a person I'd like to have as a friend if that makes sense. And definitely not just because he can cook. Wally certainly hits the nail on the head when it comes to feeling like a genuine, authentic person. Besides from this, he doesn't really have heaps going on. There's no duality or internal conflict in morality, but hey, not every character needs that to be interesting and worthwhile if you ask me. Wes is easily the most unique character when it comes to dialogue, with such great lines as and there's hardly a dull moment to ring a Wes playthrough. Wes's personality, to me, is extremely effective because of how unique it is. Most Don't Starve characters exist with their thousands of lines, and here's Wes, with some funny mime animations instead. And despite his inability to speak, Wes still has a distinct personality of his own, a childlike and jovial fellow. Granted, a writing gimmick like this will only work once, which is why the other character who doesn't have any voice lines, well, we don't speak of that. Finishing off the upper end of B tier is Wilson, aka Average Joe, aka Mr. Protagonist. Despite what so many other games and pieces of media do, Wilson, being the default character, surprisingly enough, actually has some interesting things to say, and doesn't fall into the trap of lines such as, I need help. What's that over Times there? Times may be tough, We guys, really make a great But don't team. forget to stay I wish to have sexual relations with female protagonist. A trope that so many other main characters are often a part of. Instead, Wilson is the mildly self-indulgent gentleman scientist, possessing pride and self-confidence instead of a degree or any chemical smarts. Oh, and also a decent helping of moral ambiguity to taste. It's a touch ironic that Don't Starve's default character possesses oh so much more personality than many of its more exotic ones. It really does sometimes feel like a luxury to have a character who doesn't turn my brain to mush while I'm playing them. Ah, uh, A tier. Not quite the best of the best, but pretty darn close. Beginning our A tier is Willow. Willow is Don't Starve's best example of a character who's obsessed with one thing, who doesn't exclusively talk about said thing. And yeah, while she does talk about fire a lot, she is still able to recognize that grass and twigs are useful for things other than fire, and that lumber and things made of wood have their virtues aside from being unrefined charcoal, and so on and so forth. This makes her a lot more interesting to listen to, because you probably have a 50-50 chance of hearing her say how much she wants to burn shit, or provide some other kind of insight. Because yeah, Willow actually has a personality beyond fire. What a shock. Unlike some certain other characters I could name. Uh... Do you think it's time to move on and find something else to use as a verbal punching bag? But that would involve writing more than one joke that I can just repeat throughout the video. Ugh. Effort. Yuck. Warthox is quite a unique character in that he offers a perspective on the events that occur in-game that none of the other characters really can. Being a constant native, and supposedly with the ability to leave whenever he pleases, Warthox is the game's actual resident exposition spouter, eager to mutter words that sound important, either having meaning shrouded in layers and layers of story, or not much actual meaning at all. Furthermore, Warthox is proof that monster characters can actually be interesting, and are indeed capable of having a vocabulary greater than the number of digits on one hand. Faith restored in not humanity and as irritating as the rhymes can be, they do hold a considerable amount of depth. Wendy is the strongest example of a child character who actually fits into Don't Starve's atmosphere and doesn't shatter it like an icebreaker through a skate rink. With her extremely morbid view on life and her new situation in the constant, Wendy is probably the only remaining spearhead of Don't Starve's older and grittier storytelling style, where things weren't quite as upbeat as they are now. She isn't just a grim person though, and although she tends to mope around 90% of the time, the other 10% she can be as entertaining or insightful as any other character. It's becoming a bit of a common theme, wherein the characters with some form of duality present in their personality are the ones that get placed higher in this tier list. And with that, Wendy rounds out the middle of the A tier. Second to highest in A is WX78, the auto-psychotic automaton. WX, similar to Wendy, contains the more somber and dark side of Don't Starve, except taken to the absurd level. I mean, a robot that wants to murder everything in plain sight. It doesn't get much more absurd than that. 
Similar to Woodlegs and Wilbur, WX is a fun character because of the sheer level of insanity that their quotes contain. The volume of entertaining lines here is also quite high. It's not as if you'll occasionally run across something that'll make you lightly exhale. There's a lot of slight exhaling to be done. WX does have a lot of computer-themed jokes, which can be a bit exhausting, especially if they don't particularly appeal to you. But that being said, still a sadistically fun character to listen to. Wagstaff, in a way, is sort of like Wilson on steroids. Except this time, instead of being a self-taught snob, Wagstaff wields the full power of tertiary education and has his own set of highly developed smarts. But more importantly, he takes the morally ambiguous part of Wilson to a whole nother level. Wagstaff's true intentions are very much a blur, much like the majority of his eyesight. What he truly intends to accomplish during his visit to the Constant is certainly up for interpretation. Whatever his intentions may be, there's no doubt that they're potentially of the malicious sort. This air of mystery surrounding him is what makes Wag so interesting. That, and he does have his fair share of entertaining scientific quips up his sleeve in true Don't Starve fashion. Finally, this is it. The best of the best, in terms of personality anyway, which admittedly doesn't really mean much, but hey. These two characters are easily my favourites when it comes to personality and backstory. Without any further delay, here they are. Wigfrid is truly one of the Don't Starve greats. If anything, her position here is highly commendable because unlike her other companion, High and Mighty and S-Tier atop all the others, she doesn't have the same importance in the story, which naturally comes with more development as a character, more appearance in cinematics, and so on and so forth. No, Wigfrid is just another one of Don't Starve's characters that aren't really an important part of the story, and yet her character and backstory are extremely rich. Her shtick of being an insane method actor who would rather die than break character is just so... I mean, it's essentially perfect for Don't Starve. It's the kind of ridiculous personality trait that fits so well into the game's universe. The way it ties into her gameplay is really great as well, and although this video isn't about gameplay, I think that part is worth mentioning. And furthering this, she just has plenty of great quotes. If there's any character where examining absolutely everything is worth your time, Wigfrid is definitely one of them. Finally, at the top of the mall, and to the surprise of practically nobody, is Maxwell. Maxwell has easily gotten the most development out of any Don't Starve character ever, being the focus of the first game's story, and the subject of countless cinematics, stories, and puzzles. All of these factors lend to creating someone who's genuinely one of my favourite video game characters of all time. Everything, from his initial struggle following his passion, eventually succumbing to devilish temptation and left to his devices, only able to entertain himself by exercising his newfound abilities on unsuspecting individuals, and eventually brought to ruin by one of those he had indeed captured. It's a great story, and one that only serves to enhance my appreciation of William Carter. Inside the game itself, Maxwell is still not let go of his bitter defeat, and is an extremely sardonic and apathetic person, much to the entertainment of anyone who plays him. It's great to see his perspective on the world of Don't Starve, much of which he created, and to imagine how it must all constantly remind him of his failures as a person. His quotes are easily the most entertaining in the game to me. His opinions on many events and items in-game, especially those associated with the in-game Christmas event, are the perfect blend of nihilistic and hilarious. Overall, it would be a sin for me to not give this guy the top spot on this tier list. Who knows, maybe someday, when Don't Starve Together's stories finished, Charlie will get the top spot instead, but for now, it well and truly belongs to Mr. Carter. Well, that's it. I'm done being positive. There's one character left in Don't Starve's ragtag roster, and most likely you probably thought the video was finished with Maxwell, and completely forgot about this last one. And as nice as it would be to pretend I forgot about this character, and just end the video there, I've got to commit and actually talk about every last one. Even this stain on, well, not exactly humanity, but you get the picture. Wilbur is probably the least interesting character in terms of personality, because he doesn't have a personality in any way, shape, or form. Now, don't get me wrong, just because a character is mute doesn't mean they're unable to have a personality of some kind. Wes, of course, still manages to have a distinct set of mannerisms, told through his funny animations and things like other characters' quotes for him. Wilbur, on the other hand, has nothing of the sort. When you examine things as this character, he simply says a random assortment of monkey noises, as one might expect from a monkey. This does not constitute as a personality, and is frankly a sin to be placed alongside the likes of Maxwell and company. A sin to any character from any piece of media, because any character from any piece of media could surely have more of a personality than Simeon Jim. And that's the end of that. Thanks for watching. Any feedback on the channel rebrand would be very much appreciated. Check it out, it's got it's got some cool fan art on it. Epic. Also, you can leave your own tier lists in the comment section if you feel like it. That'd be cool, I'll definitely read some of those. Also, cloth. Ugh, my life is so boring. If only I had some sexy and highly wearable YouTuber merchandise to spice up my quality of life. Wow, would you look at that? Is that some sexy and highly wearable apparel and drinkware? Wow, my life quality is immediately improved. Just look at that. Oh my goodness.
Just take in those luxurious all-over print designs, that bold and simple typography, all the never-before-seen custom artwork. I... Uh, I think I'm gonna... SPLURGE!